Cluster B personality disorders are characterized by dramatic, overly emotional, and unpredictable thoughts and behavior. From Ars Longa Media, this is Cluster B, scientifically informed, expert insights into the four Cluster B personality types, antisocial, borderline, narcissistic, and histrionic personality disorder. Here's your host, Dr. Tracy Marks. Are personality disorders a mental illness? Today's topic is based on a viewer question from General Repair, and Mr. Repair has asked a couple of times for me to discuss this and has been very persistent. He even asked that I share his question, which I will do in excerpts. Dr. Marks, having bipolar disorder and next episode in hypomania is hell. You don't get along with other people. You treat your family like crap. You treat your colleagues like crap and can't get a job. Your wife is miserable. Your kids hate you. Most days you feel like you're better off dead. I'm such an extrovert. I had to close my Facebook account because I Donald Trump the crap out of Facebook, got myself in a lot of trouble with friends and family, which no longer talk to me because I have nobody but my wife and kids left. He goes on to say, having bipolar is like Satan. The devil lives inside of you. There's no escape from these feelings of depression, anxiety, and these crazy, ridiculous thought, the constant negativity, everybody constantly complaining about how awful of a person you are. It wears on you. This is by all means, no life, no enjoyment. I enjoy nothing, never happy. Yeah, I know what you're going to say, cognitive behavior therapy. Dialectical behavior therapy doesn't work. Medication helps, but it's not the answer. I just keep waiting for life to get better, but it doesn't. Thank you, General Repair, for your transparency. There's a lot mixed in with this question, and he was commenting on a video on mixed mania, but embedded in this question is the overlay of an illness like bipolar disorder on top of a personality disorder. You can see this with the mixture of some of his comments, like his kids and wife hating him and him Donald Trumping people on Facebook and turning people off. Bipolar disorder, which is a mental illness, doesn't make you do these things. It doesn't even make people hate you. Your underlying personality that comes out full force when you're ill is what makes people dislike you. So just to make sure you understand what I've just said, your personality is your hard wiring and how you react to the environment. But if you have an illness like bipolar disorder or anxiety, those disorders disrupt your equilibrium and can bring out the negative aspects of your personality even more. But those illnesses themselves don't make people do things to hurt other people. So what is a personality disorder? A personality disorder is a pattern of inner experience and behavior that deviates from the expectations of a person's culture. That's the official definition. What's inner experience? Let's look at the classic filled glass example. If you see this as half full and I see it as half empty, we have two different perspectives based on our inner experience. Mine is more negative and yours is more positive. Both perspectives are still correct, though, but they take on different or opposite tones. Also, with a personality disorder, this pattern of inner experience and behavior must affect two out of four areas. The way you think, the way you express emotion, the way you relate to people, or your impulse control. Also, the pattern of inner experience and behavior is inflexible and you see it show up in multiple areas of your life. The pattern also goes back to late adolescence or early adulthood. And the pattern leads to problems like either internal distress or problems in your relationship or your work or school. There's 10 personality disorders, and they're clustered into three groups based on characteristics that these personalities share. With cluster A personality disorders, people appear odd or eccentric. I'm going to use the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders to define the disorders. The first cluster A personality disorder is paranoid personality disorder. 
Paranoid personality disorder is a pattern of distrust and suspiciousness. These people interpret others' motives as malevolent. Schizoid personality disorder is a pattern of detachment from social relationships and a restricted range of emotional expression. So this is the loner who's not very emotionally expressive. This can be mistaken for a person with autism spectrum disorder. But with autism spectrum disorder, the person has developmental delays as well, and they have more severe social problems. Schizotypal personality disorder is a pattern of acute discomfort in close relationships or cognitive perceptual distortions and eccentricities of behavior. And this would be the person who may be heavily into paranormal experiences, and they usually don't have close relationships with people. With cluster B personality disorders, the person appears dramatic, emotional, or erratic. The four cluster B personality disorders are as follows. Antisocial personality disorder is a pattern of disregard for and violation of the rights of others. These people tend to get in lots of trouble with the law, or they chronically break the rules without getting caught. Borderline personality disorder is a pattern of unstable interpersonal relationships, self-image, and emotional expression, and they have marked impulsivity. This person's life is very chaotic. Histrionic personality disorder is a pattern of excessive emotionality and attention-seeking. This is the person who is very dramatic and extreme. They may appear superficial, wearing their emotions on their sleeves, and considering any and everyone their dear friend. Narcissistic personality disorder is a pattern of grandiosity, need for admiration, and lack of empathy. Lack of empathy means that the narcissist doesn't appreciate the other person's needs. With cluster C personality disorders, people tend to be anxious and fearful. The cluster C personality disorders are as follows. Avoidant personality disorder is a pattern of social inhibition, feelings of inadequacy, and hypersensitivity to negative evaluation. These people tend to be very anxious in social settings. It can look very similar to social anxiety. Dependent personality disorder is a pattern of submissive and clinging behavior related to an excessive need to be taken care of. Obsessive compulsive personality disorder is a pattern of preoccupation with orderliness, perfectionism, and control. A person can have a mixed personality disorder that's a combination of a couple of these disorders. Usually the combination stays within the cluster though, but it doesn't have to. So is a personality disorder a mental illness? Although these patterns of behavior are considered disorders in our Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, we don't think of them as illnesses in the same way that we think of schizophrenia or bipolar disorder, depression, or even ADHD. With these illnesses, we see disruptions in brain chemistry that are responsible for these illnesses. But the personality disorders are patterns of thinking and behavior that just develop with you. And we all have characteristics of some of these personality disorders. We call it having certain personality features or traits. But if you have several of these traits of a particular disorder, such that it causes dysfunction in all areas of your life, then it would be considered a personality disorder. So a person can have features of narcissism without having the full-blown narcissistic personality disorder. What makes a person have a personality disorder? Well, we don't know exactly, but some of the disorders do run in families. Some of them, like schizoid personality disorder, are more prevalent in people with schizophrenia. We believe that borderline personality disorder may be a product of early trauma from childhood. Narcissistic personality is thought to be learned and the product of inconsistent or negligent parenting. And This would be parenting where you have a combination of excessive praise that's based on the parent's own insecurity. So they're praising you on what they need to hear in combination with inattention to your real emotional needs. So this is how you get the excessive need for validation. What can you do to help a personality disorder? 
Well, for borderline personality disorder, dialectical behavior therapy is extremely helpful. For histrionic personality disorder, cognitive behavior therapy can be helpful. The cognitive portion of the therapy helps the dramatic histrionic person realign their perspective to a level that's less dramatic. It also helps them appreciate how their behavior serves the purpose of getting attention and helps them find other ways to satisfy that need. Unfortunately, with antisocial personality and narcissistic personality disorder, there's not much that we have. People with antisocial personality disorder usually don't want to be helped. And the person with narcissistic personality disorder, they may want to be helped, just like General Repair is asking at least about this question, because they realize how much the problem affects their relationships. The problem is it's hard for them to own that they're the center of the problem and that it's not the world doing things to them. But even if a person does realize this, like general repair seems to, the insight doesn't last that long. It's like a rubber band that stretches out and then springs back. So I'm sorry, mechanical repair. But I have a feeling you knew this already. Thanks again for asking this question, though. And I hope you can just keep pushing forward. It could be that over time, as you get older, the negative aspects of your personality just kind of calm down a bit. We can see this with some of the cluster B disorders that people just burn out as they get older. And the disorder doesn't go away, but it's just not as offensive and problematic. There's a lot more that can be unpacked with this issue of personality disorders. Let me know if you have a specific question or issue about one of the other disorders. Share the knowledge with other people and see you next time. For more content like this, check out Mental Health Demystified, another podcast from Ars Longa Media. Join psychiatrist and popular educator, Dr. Tracy Marks, as she breaks down mental health issues and dives deeply into topics like bipolar disorder, how magic mushrooms may be a breakthrough treatment for depression, and how nutrition can help improve mental health, and much more. Ars Longa, Vita Brevitz. Learn more at arslanga.media.